Hey there, welcome back to another video of the Bioethics of Dr. Stan William. And I'm still in the UK with Martin over here in the RZZ. Can I pronounce correctly? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got a little treat for me. He's got his, one of his friends. He's got a few awesome cars and I'm going to show him. Go for a ride along and have some impressions of what I think of it. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what they are. And I don't know how many cars I will be driving. Well, ride along, I'm driving any of them, but you know. Uh, Quite excited and uh, yeah, let's let's see what's going to happen. Let's go. Yeah. Right, since we arrived at the location, let's see what this man has in store for us. So we just arrived at Steve's house, that's his name is, and immediately when open he opened up the gate. Man, look at this. This man just has. A... What year is this, Steve? 2020 Lamborghini Urus. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't want to be on camera, but he has a Porsche over here, the Taycan. An electric Porsche Taycan, these things are amazing as well. And a Lamborghini SV. Uh, SV. Uh, Spider, as I might note. A Roadster. Are they called Roadsters? That's very nice. And of course, actually, the car we're here for, the 205 Dimmer. It's a quite interesting combination if you ask me. If they haven't seen that one, uh, that, that one coming. But uh, of course, we're going to take the little dimmer for uh, for a little drive, and it looks amazing actually. So when I, back in 1990, I had a, I had a Toyota 205 GTI, a Miami Blue, 1.6, and I, and I couldn't afford to put the dimmer kit on it because I was just a kid. Yeah. And I uh, and basically just I always fancied one. So when I was 40, which was seven years ago. Uh, Terry Pankhurst, you know, the guy that does dimmer in the UK. Oh, yeah. So he was building 10 uh, signature series cars. So he had 10 body kits left over. And um, it Did had, you think um, that? No. And, no. He, um, and, and, and he was building 10 more cars. So he found a really good donor car and then build it into a dimmer. So this is number three, because number three is my lucky number. So I wanted number three. So my friend had number two built. And that's in Jersey now, a grey one. And, and he built this for me, so. Oh, that's uh, very nice. So it's actually really relatively new. Yeah, well, so yeah, it's a new. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not an old original dimmer, but it's it's built by Terry, and um, and it's one of his signature series cars. So, so the, the, the donor car was actually weirdly a Darren from Spooks. You know, Spooks Racing Development. Yeah, you know, the, I the do Persia know. Guys. So Dar this is Darren's old car. It was, oh, it was, really? It was, it was purely by chance. So last uh, last couple of weeks ago, uh, Martin was putting some new suspension and brakes on. And he asked me to call Spooks to order them and get them delivered to his place. And I uh, and I was speaking to Darren, and then Darren and Darren said, "Oh, if you st is this is this D thirty Knox? Obviously the number plate." I said, "Yeah, yeah." He said, "I've, I've been I've been trying to find that car for years. That was my old that was my old car." So he, <laughs> he, put, he put the two liter turbo engine in it and did some ah. work to it and did something with the internals and did a, made the put some played with the turbo and stuff. And so um, so he was dead surprised that, that was his car. So that's kinda, amazing. That's really cool. weird, really. So it's quite, quite nice. It's quite nice to know that the donor car was Darren from Spooks. Yeah. You know, so you know it's a good car. You know. Yeah, it's been loved in the past, so that's a good thing to know. Yeah, exactly. So, um, can we get this? Can we get it out? Yeah, that would be amazing. Five signature number three, as you just talked about, and opening the gate. <laughs> I'm just gonna get it warmed up first. Yeah, you? exactly. <laughs> Already. Even though I have three of them. Have you? Yeah. I also get a, I also have a German built 1.9 rally. Okay, cool. Yeah. But this thing feels so much lighter. How come? I don't know. Yeah, it's just 
One thing doesn't work, it's a rev character. Oh, well, luckily that's not an issue. But you can hear the revs anyway. So yeah, the, it'll rev. It's something, <laughs> it's something with the, is it the, the, the ECU in the, the ECU in the two litre turbo doesn't work, doesn't communicate well with this dash. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Uh, so Martin said he could fix it, but with some sort of. Yeah, I know these thing. devices. It's just yeah. they are very complicated to install, but once they work, they work forever. It's just the yeah. uh, analog to digital system or something. I don't know. Or the other way around, actually. Yeah, this thing goes, man. You're not even pushing it. Sounds great, does it? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. You know, I always find it very interesting when, uh, you know, people who made success in their life are able to afford Porsches, uh, yeah. Lamborghinis. Somehow, most of them always have like a little love for what you know, they used to have. You know, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, friends come around my house and, and look, you know, when I get open the garage sometimes, they're more interested in this than the Lambo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? There's yeah. just something about them. Yeah. I also have the same thing on car shows. They're like the Lambos are really cool, but then someone has a really rare old, like old Opel Cadet or something, and I'm like, dude, I haven't seen one in years. Yeah. You know, there's something about these things. What What made you fall in love with the 205 in the first place? Well, it was the car to have, wasn't it, in 1990, 1988, yeah. 1989. You either had a 205 GT, sorry, you either had a 205 GTR or Golf GTI. Yeah, they were both great, excellent, you know? actually. And, uh, I think you kind of had one or the other, didn't you? Yeah. Or, or you went down the Ford route and had a XR3i or an RS Turbo or something like that. Um, I just think that I think the I think the um, I just think, I think that the, the, the chassis on the Peugeot 205 is just uh, you know it, 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 it was a good car. Well, it's not such a good car nowadays, you know. Now yeah, but. New stuff. But back then, it was the it was the most fun one, I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I've uh, I've driven a Golf one before. It's great. For some for some reason, it just it's not the same. No. And I really like the fact that the 205, the non GTI as well, like the chassis was just so fun. Yeah. It's probably a product of the time because the French roads were really bad. So the suspension on the stock ones, like the non GTI, were very good. You could just go everywhere quick and the, the suspension will soak all the all the bumps and jumps and everything yeah. and the GTI was even better so on that basis the suspension was really nice and the chairs was built for it and nowadays of course it's just such a I'm not gonna say rare but a special thing to see you don't see it in the UK you probably won't see these a lot anymore unless you are Martin <laughs> In the Netherlands, you see, you'll see them around. A little, little bit more, uh, a little bit more common than over here, but just driving them gives you such a different experience than all the modern stuff. I'm guessing. I've got a 1973 Dodge Challenger as well. Really? Yeah, 650 horsepower. Uh, Whoa! Road going drag car. Uh, Mopar, 7.2 liter Mopar engine. It's not on my house because I haven't got enough garage space for it in storage. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Yeah, you cannot leave that thing outside. Oh, yes! Once it's warmed up, this thing likes to go. I'm surprised at how composed this still is, even though because the white body makes the suspension a bit weird, but yeah. very nicely done, of course. Terry knows what he's doing, so. Yeah, so Terry, uh, I mean Terry's more of a bodywork man and uh, a cosmetics guy really. So when I when I got the car, I lived down south. I lived near London then. I only moved back in there about four years ago. And um, and he didn't. And, and I said, where do I get it serviced and stuff? And Terry wasn't really that interested because he's not. His, he doesn't get. He doesn't do the oily bits. Yeah. Um, and I said, I mean it's a bit criminal really, but I've only done about 200 miles in this car in eight years. Oh. So I, I just. I just haven't had time to use it for various reasons. And then, I, then 
and then earlier this year I thought, you know what? Because the suspension was the standard suspension, which was pretty shit, and the uh, standard brakes, which are really shit. You know, because this this has got 230 horsepower. This one apparently. Yeah, that's. <laughs> so um, so I didn't um didn't really enjoy driving it much. So I give it to Martin, and Martin's put proper brakes on it, a proper suspension, and uh, it's just a bit more fun now. So I think I use it more. Yeah. Well, I can imagine, like, I do the brakes and suspension up myself as well, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Especially you want to go a trip down memory lane, like back yeah. in the day. I'll tell, tell you what Terry did do, he's put this um, power steering thing on for me. Oh, really? It's got, um, very, it's got, you can turn the power steering to um, be more assisted. It's a bit heavy at low speeds. Yeah, interesting, Martin has a similar system in his V6 one. Yeah. From a uh, from an Astra, you took it out of. Not sure if this is the same one, but yeah, that's a very nice system. Never heard of that before, but in the in the Netherlands, that's something that we do. No, I've never seen it before. But Terry yeah. just said it was, a, it was a little modification that he did that makes the car a bit easier. Yeah. I only have one two or five with power steering, and the rest of them all are without. And having power steering is quite nice, yeah. <laughs> especially if you're. Uh, you know, for a pleasure drive, having power steering is quite nice. The other ones are like more like, I give it hell, I don't really care much about the power steering, but yeah. when you're parking and going for a cruise, it's quite quite lovely to have it. Wow, that's a that little pop. <laughs> the same way you drive this thing. Oh, to the driver gets, the Lambo gets a real good thrashing. Yeah. I was doing 180 miles an hour coming through France last week. That's nice. Right, you could take this thing out like on the really narrow bumpy roads. I don't think the Lambo will like that. No, the Lambo's too, too wide. Yeah. Because this is so small, even though it's wide, it's still small. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can still drive these little tight roads. That's what I really like about the, the hot hatchback, the whole the whole idea of it. And it's definitely a hot hatch at the moment. <laughs> I must admit, I'm, the, 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 that, that Porsche um, Taycan has just replaced the Golf GTI. I had a Mark, a Mark 8 Golf GTI uh, club, you know, the um, club sport one. And that was, such a, that was a great car. It was a proper hot hatch. Oh, yeah. You used to, you know, ragging that around the lane. It's lovely. Ah, a Mackie. Yeah, loads around here. Yeah. nicely.
Yeah, today was actually the first day we actually got some work done. I was uh, doing the, the aqua blasting. Okay. I like doing that, even though it's kind of annoying, but... Yeah! Man, this suspension is really nice. If I put that on my car, my car is lowered. <laughs> it's just a big learning experience you had having a week with Martin you know uh, he's doing trip Peugeot for well, not over 20 years I'm guessing yeah and I'm only doing them for like six okay so I've got a lot to learn it's also nice to see uh, uh, how different the Peugeot culture is over here than it is in the Netherlands these are very popular in the Netherlands these engines actually That was it. My ride along in the in the was it the Heritage series it was? Signature series. Signature series. Dimmer. Absolutely loved it. This car is very cool. Somehow this car feels so much lighter than mine. It's just pretty amazing. It's just such a nice piece. And the turbo in here, yeah, that's awesome man. That's great. Maybe you're gonna ask him to open up the hood. But uh, let's do that first. And uh, pop those videos in between. Then. I had a great time. I want to thank you, Steve. Thank you for this experience. And uh, yeah, hope you like this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Later on. Steve's going to take us out in a Tycoon 4S. A bit of a bonus clip. I'm going to make a whole video of it, but damn, that's going to be amazing. Let's see what happens.